Alright, so uh, welcome everyone. We're going to be playing the adventure, the new adventure, the new DLC for Hand of Fate 2. And uh, it's actually very interesting. The mechanics are going to be extremely unique because, well, I've only played this a little bit, but the, the stranger wants blood from you. So he's going to drain some life. We've got to be a bit careful about that. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to try a recommended deck. This is usually what I try to do initially, just because I find the randomness element a little bit fun. So we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, see, so the goblin can recommend us a deck. Well, good. He's no match for an experienced player. Am I an experienced player? Probably not. But uh, we're going to do that anyway, and we're going to see how the goblin does for us. If I've learned nothing else, it's that no good can come out of an ill-considered negotiation. The prison door shuts behind you with a clang. Another day fighting in the pit followed by another night in a dirty cell. You wonder how long you will be here. You wonder how long you will survive. As you pick yourself up from the dirt, something stirs in the shadows. It slinks forward, eyes glowing yellow in the darkness. You glimpse long limbs and cold grey skin as a talon reaches towards you. You scuttle back until the stone wall stops your retreat. A refined voice rings out. Oh dear, it appears we've both made an error in underestimating the goblins. And here I stand, dressed in rags and barely fit for company. The voice seems out of place, coming from such a fearsome visage. But sure enough, the rags draping the creature were once noble garments. Take a moment to steady yourself. You have work to do, but I understand it will take you a moment to ready yourself. I want what you want, obviously. We need to escape, and there's only one way that's going to happen. Blood. Yours first, theirs second. And we're gonna say blood? Question mark? The creature pushes a wooden bowl filled with gruel in your direction. In my fullness, I would leave here in an instant, but this is all they have fed me. It lacks any life, any strength, any power. Now you are here, beaten, but still vital. Together we can gain our freedom. He eyes you hungrily. Oh, that's definitely something I'd like to avoid if at all possible. That's not going to happen, though. As you can see, he's kind of hungry, so we're going to accept the deal. Take 25 damage from that as well. Initially, the stranger is upon you almost before the words are out of your mouth, teeth sinking into your flesh as his arms envelop you, keeping you still. A breathless moment passes, and then another. Too much. You struggle, and you can feel the creature becoming stronger as each moment passes. With limbs like iron, he releases you, gasping. There is a wild look in his eyes as he rises to his full height, incandescent in the gloom. He grins at you toothily. The pact is sealed. You should know, we of the lease never break agreements once made. Ah, so we have now made a deal with the stranger, and he's going to help us out with all kinds of wonderful magic. You hear the goblin guards approaching the prison door. With a flourish, the creature tosses his cloak to the floor, where it falls into a pool of liquid midnight. The shadows churn, filling the room with darkness, drawing in the light and leaving utter blackness in their wake. And this is his special ability. The goblin chatter slows to a slur and deepens. You hear the key grate against the chamber of the lock, turning with a snap. The door creaks open slow as a spoon through honey. The beast turns to you. Do not dally, he insists. Embrace the twilight. Then you are moving like a shadow reaching out as the sun sets over the horizon. Out of the cell, past the guards. Strange that you were so easily captured, but so easily freed once more, is it not? Through the caverns and on toward the light. All right, so that is his new ability. You are being followed. 
Yes, thank you very much, dealer. Anyway, yeah, you can see that the various goblins are represented by various figures on the de oh, well. I was going to say on the deck, on the on the board, I guess you could say, and uh, we can use our shadow ability, or shall we say, the sh the stranger's shadow ability, to get get past them. So that's very nice. There you are met with the sweet scent of fresh air and the warmth of the setting sun, and as quickly as it had begun, the oblivion of shadow and darkness is gone. As the last warm rays sunlight sink below the tree line, you take a moment to rejoice. After weeks of fighting in the pit, you are finally free. Eager to part ways with your bloodthirsty acquaintance, you wait for the right moment to take your leave. Talk to the stranger to continue. Oh, I, I, I don't know whether this is a good idea, but we'll do it. You nervously thank the stranger for his assistance in your escape, and wish him good fortune on his journey. Done? We are not close to done. I said I would free you from those goblins, and they will pursue you until the ends of this earth. You said you would heal my hunger, and I am not close to sated. Do not err. From here our paths are bound together until death or completion. And so, we are given an objective. To satisfy our companion's hunger, to settle our debt, which is 500 life. I can only hope that the deck that the goblin has <laughs> built for us is going to be enough in the way of life region, I suppose. Relinquish your life to me, the beast growls. Alright, so we can either give him 10 life or another 25. Considering we've healed a little bit from the food consumption so far, I'm actually going to give him another 25. For what? What is it you sustain with your own self? The beast flexes his claws. They shine a dull bone yellow, ending in razor points. Alright, so I can actually do it again if I am feeling lucky. Am I feeling lucky? Not really, but I'm going to go to 50 HP and temper his appetite once again. Velez's fangs glint, menacing. Your life burns bright, he says. Alright, so we're going to finish talking now. The beast frowns at you. Know this, I seek counsel with my uncle. I must inform him of my brother's treachery. He points to the night sky. A slender crescent moon can be made out between the trees. The blood moon. We must reach him before the blood moon. But he is far, far from this place. We can only reach him through the lease, and I need power for that. Alright, so sh I guess we'll just nod in agreement. He's probably just going to say, Ah, you're just a foolish human, and... Uh, there's no need for me to explain that to you, probably. Anyway, let's just uh, nod in agreement, I suppose. Make your final preparations, he continues. We can wait here no longer. All right, so we can either cook food to restore a little bit of extra life for us. Personally, I don't think we really need to do that. And the one thing that we are going to do is enter the Shadow Realm, and that There's is going to enable us to move. Time you step out of our world and into the shadows. Velez nods. I cannot keep us both in the lease for long. You slip through the veil into cold oblivion. The colors of the forest become muted, and your vision swims. You cannot be sure if you are in a dream or not, and we can now pass through goblin patrols. But, as a result of that, we will skip our next encounter. Alright, so let's do that. Now we have a choice. We can either go downwards or upwards. I I really don't know. It's, it's all RNG from here, so I guess I'll just go down. Do you insist on doing this the hard way? Ah, or are you that, that was not the best idea. I was actually hoping that we might get something kind of good in that encounter card. I was hoping for maybe some extra gear or food. You feel the shadow beast's claws clamp on your shoulder. Fool, he hisses. We can avoid these goblins if we travel through the Lisa Horror, through shadow. Ah, uh, yes. So, well, that's exactly what I wanted to do, Deal but, uh, them, well, obviously will. that didn't I work. I rather leave them be. You trespass on gnomish ground, humans, a voice calls out as a dozen small creatures leap from the trees around you. The penalty for this transgression is death. Make peace with your gods. All right, so gnomes, yes, I fought these once before. Gnomes are kind of creepy. Well, I'd say very creepy.
As you can see, they're little pygmy warriors by the looks of things. Fiercely territorial, trespass in gnomish lands and face the consequences. These are not your garden variety, are they? Pesky, per persistent and impossible to hit, gnomes cause snare, evade to avoid or struggle to break free. Gnomes can only be deterred with a finisher and that is in the form of kicking them while they're down. So that's what we're going to try and do. I have a two-handed axe here. Okay, let's see if I'm... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we, we can now kick them. Kick. Uh, there we go. Ch try and kick as many of them as I can. Yeah, there we are. We just need to avoid them as much as possible and then just kick them whenever we have an opportunity. Oh, yes, okay. We cannot do any damage to them. They are just too, too agile, too agile for us. There we go, and oh, I was too late for the last one. And he decided to have a bit of a ride. I thought I would do him the... Uh... Oh, look at that, he's saying hi. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> yes, I thought I would just do him the, a little bit of a favor there, so that he saves face in front of his dead friends, I guess. Oh, no. Hey, we're going into morbid territory, aren't we? Oh, well. The battered gnomes pick themselves up from the battlefield and approach you cautiously. All right. The penalty for this transgression is no longer death. We'd like to parlay. <laughs> oh, yes. We seek arms to defend ourselves, a gnome declares loudly. Hand over some of your equipment and we'll release you. We can even pay you something. I thought I won that. I thought I won that battle, so why should I have to pay them anything? I'll give you some food for a helmet, one of the small folk exclaims. I'll show the secrets of this land for a ring, another chimes in. Give me a weapon I can wield and one for my brother. We've got gold. Okay, so they basically give you a whole bunch of different options here. Unfortunately, because this is kind of early in our run, we really do not have anything. Like, if I take a look at my inventory right here, I actually do have a ring. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so what does that actually give me? Uh, it gives me wheel peak. Uh, okay, so wheel peak is pretty good. So you, so you can actually view the cards in the wheel gambit before it spins. So that's pretty nice. But it's not necessary. It's not a necessary item. What else do we have here? Yeah, Adventurer's Garb. Ah, yes. Now, many of the items, and indeed armor, in the game have been changed significantly with the combat overhaul, which was implemented quite recently. And uh, personally, I feel like it makes combat so much more responsive, much, much easier to deal with. And uh, that's not to say that it's simple by any means, as you've seen. Goblins can even pose a bit of a threat there. So, yeah, I'm actually going to think about handing a ring over, I think. Let's let's see if I can... Uh, oh, actually, Soldier's Sword. Hmm. I'm actually pretty happy using the Warrior's Axe, so I'm going to give the Soldier's Sword instead. Oh, actually, wait a minute. They want two weapons, don't they? So I guess I'll just give a ring. Are you sure you wish to trade these items? Yes, I am. You surrender the equipment to the gnomes. Satisfied, they offer payment in return. All right, so they will now unlock basically the entire map so we know exactly where we're going. And, oh, that's the, oh, uh, yeah, that's a campfire, right? There's a forest. Okay, so the passage of time is, I assume, the place that we need to go. We gain a little bit of fame, and the gnomes have retreated back to their forest. All right, so let's continue onward. These goblins can only move one, one space at a time, thankfully. Your desperate trek away from the terrors of the goblin fighting pits is interrupted when your path leads you to an armed band concealed in the forest. And we have a couple of bounty hunters. Oh no. You watch from your hidden vantage point as the group confronts a wandering peasant. They let the man pass after carefully inspecting his face and his meager possessions. They are here for us, Velez mutters intently. Word of our escape has preceded us. An offer of coin no doubt spurred many into action. We could go the long way around to approach them from the north instead, Vela suggests. It would take several hours, but it could give us the opportunity to take them by surprise. My kind are most effective at surprise attacks. Okay, so we can wait until night and ambush them, which might actually make sense, but consuming food is going to be a bit of an issue as we progress through the run here. If I'm unable to find someone that will give me a, uh, a bit of food or at least the opportunity to buy some, then we will be in trouble. Uh, I guess I'm going to do it. 
After hours of backtracking, you return to the clearing, this time approaching for a more f from a more favorable angle. A few of the bandits huddle around a small campfire, while others wait in the darkness, watching the trail. This job's a fool's errand, one of the sentries said. I don't trust those little freaks to pay us even if we do catch them. Oh, is it the gnomes? Oh no, it's the goblins, obviously. It's easy money if we can find them, the other responds. Relax, we'll be out of these woods before winter sets in. You prepare to charge at them. Right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty awful at selecting these things, by the way. So if you're if you're if you're watching, then uh, I understand your pain. Don't worry about it. You stumble and flail foolishly at shadows as the mercenaries draw their weapons. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's okay. So I've actually done this before. This uh, particular event. Basically, what happens if you succeed? Your friend Velez will actually go and. Well, suck the blood out of one of them and actually uh, remove that from the fight. So that is actually pretty cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it this time around, but hopefully we'll get another opportunity. We might. All right. Well, I do need to be careful of these shield-wielding fellows. to get him up. There we go. Oh, he lost his cloak there for a second. That is, uh, that's not very good for him, is it? But you can see that Velez is actually very, very powerful in his special ability. He's able to dart around the battlefield doing significant damage and a little bit of debuff, as far as I'm aware. So if you do hit the ones that he hits, then you do a little bit of bonus damage, I think. Quickly, mortal, do not delay us further by poring over the meager possessions of dead underlings. Their blood runs cold and they are of no further use. Alright, so we actually did gain a little bit of equipment here. Sacrificial blades or frontier barbute? Okay. Well, we can either go for the helm. We already have a pretty decent weapon in the form of the warrior's axe. So I suppose we could go for this. It gives us map reveal. After every encounter with a gambit, reveal one random encounter card on this level. That's pretty good. Mm, might make sense. Mm, yeah, okay, fine, let's take that. The sacrificial blades are dual wielding. They're actually pretty good. I like the dual wielding weapons in this game. They're very responsive, but I found that uh, nowadays I actually quite like the two-handed, so I'm going to stick with that until we maybe find another one. You find a folded parchment on one of the fallen. It provides a written description of you and your companion, and a bounty offered for your return to the pit. Alright, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the map here. I think the passage of time is where we need to go, so I suppose we'll do that. Press on if you will, but attend to your companion's appetites lest he forget himself. Yes, so that's a bit of a warning from the dealer there. I can only assume that Velez, if something happens, like if we don't give him blood for a certain period of time, he might turn on us in some way. A half moon stands high in the night sky as you make your way through the pass. Time moves ever on. Do not disappoint me. Well, ah, uh, I'd just like to stay alive if I possibly can. The stranger stops abruptly and stands tall. Prepare yourself, servant. My kin lie ahead. We might be fighting some vampires. Brother against brother, ally against ally. You and your companion are surrounded by a group of cloaked shadow beasts. Lord Velez, they bow. We have been sent to return you to the goblin pits. Your companion growls. I may no longer be the master of House Lashar, but you will step aside. Perun has deceived us all. The members of House Lashar exchange looks, amusement, and concern. Velez's talons elongate. So be it. Alright, so shadows can counterattack. Oh no! Light weapons are recommended. You know what that means? The sacrificial blades that I did not take previously. That's kind of bad. Oh well, never mind. We'll try our best.
Ah, so the Shadow Disciple. Few humans have seen a Shadow Beast and live to tell the tale. Disciples can induce blood madness, allowing them to cause high damage. Attack them to interrupt their incantations. I will do my best. Ah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I interrupted him. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to use Velez's attack here. See if we can do a little bit of extra damage. Ooh, and that is a lot of damage right there. Wow. Okay, so I think I'd like to avoid that happening again, if at all possible. Let's try and stop this guy. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, that's great. So I think we're good now. We only have to deal with these guys, and they're pretty easy, I think. Not too bad. We did take quite a lot of damage there, so I'm hopeful that with the extra gold that we have just gained, I might be able to interact with a merchant, and we might be able to get something from that. Velez contemplates the ash drifting through the cool night air, the fallen members of his house slain by own hand. It appears my brother's lies run deep. Alright, your companion gained 20 life from knocked down enemies. That's pretty fantastic, that's great. So he can, he can also gain life from various enemies that you fight. So you don't necessarily need to give your own life force, which is good. I must reach my uncle soon, Velez mutters to himself. Feed your companions fully before the blood moon to win the gold token. Okay, so that is obviously to complete the adventure itself. And uh, yeah, to get a successful mission done. So, let's have a look. As day breaks, you continue your journey. Alright, so... Well, we need to enter the Shadow Realm, don't we? We need to enter the Shadow Realm, otherwise we are going to run into this Goblin Guard. And that's not good. So, we can either we can bargain with him, but that's obviously just going to go into the... Please take my blood. Please kill me. You know, thing. So, we're going to go into the Shadow Realm instead. Once more into the shadows. Move quickly now. And he obviously cannot keep us in the Shadow Realm for long, so let us get out of here. And I'm going to move downwards. There we go. I was hopeful that the goblin would move that way. You pause a moment on the trail to consider the surrounding forest. I very much hope I will be successful in this particular encounter because it sounds like a good one. Forage for food. Who doesn't need food right now? I have four food, so it's going to be quite necessary. Game seemed plentiful. You've noticed a few mushrooms and can hear a stream not far off. Now could be a good time to replenish your supplies. You inspect your supplies before making a decision. Alright, so we can either hunt wild animals, go fishing, or forage for mushrooms. I can assume that these are all different levels of awesomeness, I, I suppose, because I, I can assume if you hunt wild animals, you're probably going to get the most food, then fishing is going to be the kind of the medium option, and foraging is going to be the least, but they are probably all associated with different difficulty levels as well. So I'm going to, I guess I'll just take the middle option and go fishing. Yes. I'm not a vain man. You must appreciate that the game, this game, has been my focus for more years than I can count. I have a certain pride regarding its twists and turns. Well, you saw what happened. You saw what happened. I thought the wheel would actually go a little bit faster right there, but obviously, uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't happen for me right there. So we are probably going to have some issues, but thankfully, thanks to our helm, we now know what the next encounter card is, which is Fallen Treasure. So we might still be able to find a merchant, spend our 25 gold, and gain some food. I've had some runs in Hand of Fate 2 where everything has looked extremely dire, but then at the very end, when I have zero food, I'm just about to die, something happens and we gain a whole bunch of food, you know, or gold, and find a merchant. And, uh, yeah, that's the way to go. Anyway, you see some treasure lying just inside the den of a family of claw trolls. Ring of food. Exactly what I'm talking about. Alright, I like this. You may try to retrieve it, but the claws of troll cubs are very sharp indeed. You'll have to be quick. Enter the cave and take the equipment. Alright, I'm going to do that. As you can see, optionally discard any non-food gain card to receive plus two food, which is amazing. It's really, really good. 
And I actually did do it. Ah, there we go. You retrieve the item, but the troll cubs are enraged at your intrusion to their cave. Alright, so this is... Uh, I think this is actually going to be pretty simple to do. I... Haha. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, uh, don't take my word for it, though. Ah, there we go. Phew. Ah, yes. There are even more difficult ones than that. So, if you're looking for a challenge, that pendulum thing definitely is it. Alright, so I escaped from the troll cubs. That's pretty good. There's the trading house. Ooh, there we go. That is where we need to go. The trading house is going to be extremely important. Okay, so I would assume that this goblin, considering the way it's facing right now, let's actually just take a look. Okay, so this goblin right here on the left is going to go right. And this goblin here on the right is going to go downward. So we need to make sure that we avoid them. So I'm going to go this way. Let them move. And I guess we're just going to go back the way we came, I suppose. Even though I'd like to go to the trading house, but maybe the goblin will actually move ahead and you know, get out of our way. While roaming the dark alleyways of the capital, you see a suspicious group traveling in your direction. Oh, it's the Blight and a couple of skeletons. They are dragging a locked chest behind them, its contents unknown. In another direction, you spy an item glinting in the moonlight. Oh, Dark Thirst. Uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty good two-handed weapon as far as I'm aware. However, you notice a number of shadowy forms lurking in the alley nearby. Which way will you go? Alright, so we can either go towards the visible enemies, or we can go towards the enemies that we have no idea about and potentially get murdered. So, mm, locked chests, or, I mean, Dark Thirst, I actually don't know the stats offhand of Dark Thirst, but it might be really good. So I suppose I'm going to go for the, uh, the the poor option. You approach the item, but soon run into trouble. You've been ambushed. Oh, surprise. Uh, okay. Oh, it's actually not even that bad. We're actually up against a couple of corrupted enemies, and they're going to be not entirely difficult to defeat. They're quite slow. I've just realized this helm looks like an extremely fascinating fashion, fashion statement, doesn't it? Yeah, not very good. Okay, so yeah, you can see here that that big guy over there, he needs to have his armor broken before you can actually do damage to him. But once you break his armor, everything's good. You can you can literally just finish him with a finishing move. There we go, that guy's down. I'm just going to take care of the adds first, as much as I can. There we go, and Velez is just about to die, actually, so that's not particularly good. I'm going to try and use his special ability. There we go. Uh, I'd like to kill that if at all possible. There we go. A bit worrying to do finishing moves sometimes because it does leave you a little bit open to attack. Alright, so that was a little bit better than previous combat so far, and uh, we didn't take any damage, so that's good. That means more blood for Velez, he's going to be happy about that. We gain a little bit of extra fame as well. Fame is a stat that is used to unlock various, well, various legendary armor and, uh, and weapons as well. Some, some weapons actually do have a fame requirement. Your assailants dispatched, you pick up the equipment that drew you to this alleyway. Let's take a look at Dark Thirst and actually see what it's all about. Alright, so it requires less damage to cause knockdown to corrupted enemies. Defeat 50 corrupted enemies with this weapon to unlock the token. Alright, well that's going to be kind of a little bit difficult. Perform a powerful strike that causes 200% damage on a single target. Oh, okay, so it's actually worse than the Warrior's Axe in terms of its special ability. But... Hmm... Well, I suppose I'm going to take it just because I actually like it quite a bit. So, let's do it. Why not? You pause to inspect the bodies of the vanquished. Ah. Oh, dear. Let's do this. Nine? I use... Uh, come, on, come on, now. Okay, we're going we're gonna to re-roll that. We can't get another one. We got another one. <laughs> ah, oh, really? We got another one. Uh, you know, it's... A, it, 
one-eyed one-eyed snake eyes right one-eyed no anyway let's uh let's just move on we didn't find anything of value of course uh that was that was very unlucky very unlucky and i, I jinxed myself didn't i yeah absolutely absolutely all right well let's take a look here let's see uh well this go yeah this goblin is going to come behind us now i think so maybe what we could do is just st stick around here because you can see that when we travel on cards that we have already stepped on you don't actually consume food so you can actually just stick around here a little bit and see what's going on in the area and then make your calculations all right so you continue your escape through the brooding forest you wonder if it is good fate or poor that nothing eventful occurs well it's poor in my case Okay, so that goblin's going to move down there again. Ah, okay, so they are actually just moving on a uh, on a infinite cycle, basically. Okay, so I'm going to have to go this way, and then this way, I suppose. No, that's Once that's not going to work, actually. Hmm, we are struck from behind. Everything fades to black. Okay, so your mind roils as you try to fight off the memories of your time in captivity, the time you spent surviving the goblin pits. All right, so we are now apparently gonna be put through to a flashback of sorts and we're going to be fighting some enemies that we haven't seen before I don't think and we do have that wonderful new hammer so I suppose oh yeah we have seen those guys not the riflemen but the other ones oh, I wish I had an AOE weapon of some kind I feel like that would really help out quite a bit Yeah, and I also don't have Velez, either. Have you noticed that? Yes, I don't have my companion with me, so this is going to be extremely difficult. Ah, uh, and he got me with a quick slash at the end, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. Oh well, never mind. Alright, so I hope that Velez is actually going to come back. I don't know whether he will, but let's hope. As you can see there, he seems to have a 5 on his card over there, so I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I suppose we'll find out. The strange beast has once again dispatched the pursuers, but at a cost. I stop them for now, he whispers from beneath his hood, but I will need some assistance okay so every time you run into a goblin you're gonna have some problems so we're gonna have to sacrifice some blood here 25 life and we have zero food so this is gonna be pretty bad the gray recedes from his fur the cracks in his horns heal oh so he's not particularly uh not particularly vampiric i suppose you could say anyway you continue your escape okay so ah this is this is perfect Yes, this is absolutely perfect. We might be able to get some food from this. Velez sniffs the air curiously. I see no split corpses, but the scent, it is intoxicating. The old farmer hawks his wares to passers by. Tarts, pies, and exotic fruits. He doesn't sound like that probably, but uh, let's buy some exotic fruits, I guess. Passes you a bunch of blue oblong fruits covered in pink speckles. Are we going to die from this? No, no, it seems like we're not. As you can see up there, seven food. We desperately need this. Okay, how much are you going to... Uh, okay. Yep, that's fine. Ten gold? Yep, I'm happy with paying that. Absolutely fine paying that. Give me that food, yes. Seven food, thank you very much. Actually, what? what? We get both cards? Wow, okay, that, that guy is very, uh, very, very nice, isn't he?
All right, so should we try and buy something else from him? Uh, I only have 15 gold, so we might be able to get a pie. He passes you a vegetable pie from his wagon. It smells richly of herbs. Okay, so there's 10 food here. If we can get this, we're going to be set. As always, the pies have been selling steadily today. Chester considers his coin chest for a while before he finally decides on a price. Ooh, that's going to be kind of harsh for me, I feel. Oh, I did it. 10 gold. Very nice. I'm usually absolutely awful at these things, so I'm very, very pleased about that. Okay, so we're currently, as you can also see up at the top right there, next to our objective, we are also at half moon. I don't know what that means in regards to how close we are to the blood moon, but I think it's probably pretty close, and we are nowhere near giving him the amount of life that he needs. So now that we've at least dealt with one of the goblin patrols, I'm actually going to go the other way, I think. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to go the other way, because I can just go here and cook some food and restore some life this way. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I think I'm going to try and get to 50 life. There we go. 50 life is pretty good. We could also bargain with him once again, but I don't see the necessity to do that right now. And uh, this goblin's going to step down there, so let's just let him pass by. And then we're going to just, you know, do a little bit of shuffling, I suppose you could say. Okay, yes. Okay, so he's finally going to leave. Uh, we may we may just have to enter the Shadow Realm, actually. I don't really want to do that, but I guess we'll, we'll have to. There we go. So we skip it entirely, which is very good. And now we're going to just enter the forest. Nothing happens, of course. I'm going for the trading house, but uh, I don't know why, really, because we've spent all our gold. So maybe it's not the best idea. But maybe we can sell something? All right. So, yes, we have more bounty hunters. Uh, yes, they are here for us. Okay, so we can either consume one food... I think we are probably going to try and ambush them once again. Maybe we'll be able to see the awesome event where he actually kills one of these guys. You're prepared to charge at them. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yes. No. That did, that did not work. It still did not work. I don't know why, but I'm just very bad at tracking those things. Alright, so we have thieves, and we also have Imperial Guards by the looks of things. Okay, this is mm, maybe not going to be too good for us, but I'm doing a lot of damage. Alright, yeah, I had to concentrate a little bit more there because I really did not want to lose any additional HP now that we have recovered ourselves. And that's exactly what I mean. We were on the brink of defeat just moments ago, and now we are doing pretty reasonably. I mean, obviously, we still need more food and more gold and more life and everything, but, you know, still pretty decent. Alright, so we are, we're actually gaining another 20 life. Now, what we can do is we can discard this to gain two food. Now, obviously, there's no real need to do that because 20 life is much more than two food. So we're just going to continue. And we get another reveal thanks to our helmet. All right, so I could go to the trading post. I, I suppose I will 
just to just to have it done. And we can trade food for equipment here. We can also trade equipment for food. So that might actually make sense. So we can trade. Uh, let's actually see what we have here. Do I actually have anything? Yeah, I do have quite a bit of stuff. Oh, I actually have a warrior's axe and a soldier's sword to trade. That might make sense. Uh, yeah, just one torso, one ring. And one helmet as well. Do I have any shield? Nope. Okay, so I guess what I'm going to do is trade two pieces of equipment. And that's going to be the warrior's axe. Even though I like it quite a bit, I'm going to use the other one, just in case we come across more corrupted enemies. And I'm going to use the soldier's sword for this as well. Alright, let's see what we're going to get. Lucky for you, a butcher just came past with a fresh slaughter of sheep. I hope you have a good appetite. Alright, so... Oh, ten food. Five food and... Seven. Wow, okay, so there you go. We're actually absolutely fine right now. I could trade some food for equipment now. Put up eight food for random. Twelve food for your pick from two pieces of equipment. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. We could basically go for a better chest piece. But food is very important, and especially considering we have to give Velez his, shall we say, share of our being. Uh, yes, I, I guess we're just going to do that instead, and I'm going to leave. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to just see where this goblin wants to go. Okay, it's going to go this way. Uh, it's going to go that way again. Alright, I guess what I'm going to do is just enter the Shadow Realm then. And we're going to speak to Velez once we're safely over the other side. In the light, you are once more at risk. All right, so let's go into the camp and we will bargain with the stranger. Okay, I'm actually just going to indulge his appetite probably twice, and uh, we're gonna. You have strength enough for more. Yes, well, uh, don't be too greedy, thank you very much. Uh, although he is helping us quite a bit. Oh, well, there you go. So there's 130. That's really not very good at this point, I don't think, but we're trying our best. Let's see how we do with consuming a little bit of food here. And there we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So, we're probably going to have to use our shadow walk here. Oh, there we go. Ah, foraging for food once again. So now we can only hunt for wild animals or forage for mushrooms. I guess I'll just go for the mushrooms this time. Oh dear. Okay, I actually have no idea what that means, but I suppose we'll find out. Or not, as the case may be. Yes, I, I did tell you. I did tell you. I am absolutely awful at this. If you think that you can do better, there is an easy solution to it. Anyway, hours later, you discover this place is devoid of nutritious plants. I don't think so somehow. It's just that I'm awful at it. Yes, awful, awful. Okay, so otherwise. Oh, a friend in need is down there. That's pretty good. Okay, so the goblin is actually going to step here. Yes. That's not very good. Yes, he's moving away from us, thankfully. Oh, another forage for food. Okay, so I can actually go fishing once again for another wheel gambit. Or, uh, yeah, okay, fine. Let's go fishing. I'm going to try and redeem myself. There we go. Okay, so we got three food. I redeem myself very slightly. That should help. Yes, that should help. Thanks. The fish are biting well today. Alright, payment due. Alright, okay, so I think the top right card is the place that we need to go to. And I'm going to try and use my shadow walk. I'm going to need to do that right now. Or am I? Actually, you know what? Let's wait. Hmm... I'm not entirely sure. Let's just deal with this encounter right now, and then we'll make that decision. As you hike through the mountains one fine day, you come across an injured traveler. Though he is clearly deeply wounded and barely moving, you sense something disturbing about the cloaked figure and approach with caution. You, mortal, come here. The creature commands, his voice rasping. I need sustenance to heal myself, and you will provide it. I Velez, is that you? <laughs> it's not him. You draw your weapon, and the beast weakly raises its arm to defend itself. Spare me, and I will make it worth your while. Alright, so I can accept his offer. I can ask how. 
or finish him. <laughs> finish him? No, we're not going to do that. We'll just accept his offer. As you lower your blade, he suddenly lunges at you. We're getting used to this. Wow, he actually took 30% of our life. That's, that's less than Valer's, actually. He took 21 HP. The creature continues to draw blood from your arm. Throw the creature off. No, we're going we're gonna to wait. We're going to wait this out. He's going to continue to take percentages by the looks of things rather than actual values, which is good. Let's continue waiting. Let's continue waiting. We're gonna we're gonna do this, you know, the proper way. All right. Uh, this is this is getting dicey, actually. Is that enough? Ah. Uh, I, I I guess I'll I'll, I'll keep going. N no. Ah. Uh, okay, we'll do one more. Okay. Ah, there we go. He takes a moment to regain his composure. I probably gave him a little bit too much, didn't I? Probably. Uh, you will not regret this, he says. Haha. <laughs> I would have recovered my full strength in time, I've no doubt, but I admit you have been a boon to me this night. He gestures at the darkness, saying, The humans who dared to think they could best me in combat lie fallen in a clearing to the south. Their ambition was as foolish as their deaths were quick, but perhaps they had something that would be of use to you. The shadows seem to gather about his person, until nothing remains. Ah, okay, well, that, in my opinion, is definitely a shadow creature of some kind. Maybe one of Velez's people, who knows. Anyway, uh, the dealer has added an encounter card to the deck as well, so we were actually sufficient in doing that. That's pretty good. You set out with a flaming torch and soon arrive at the scene of slaughter. A dozen armed men have been recently butchered here. Among the remains you find no decent equipment just the tools of farmers and provincial soldiers. As you leave the carnage, you step on a blade, hidden in the shadows of the grass. To the victor go the spoils. Right, so we are weapon. getting... You do not wish to see turned against you one day. A knight's sword. That's actually pretty good. You can see here that it can riposte counterattacks. Against shadows, riposte deals 150% damage and causes stun if they counterattack. So that's actually a pretty nice weapon. I'm not going to equip it right now, but if we go up against some shadows, it might make sense to equip this, if I remember I have it. Well done. All right, so I now have 6 HP, so it's probably going to be worthwhile me going into camp and just cooking some food real quick. Uh, this is kind of... Mm, I, I obviously did not time this correctly, but I, I guess I'm going to try and consume a little bit of food here, just in case we do get into a battle. You never know. Right, so entering the Shadow Realm now would basically not make sense, because it's going to take us one step and then another step, and at that point we're going to be right on top of the Goblin, and that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to do things a little bit differently here. Maybe I can go the other way, actually. Hmm. Or maybe not. Maybe I can make this work. He's gonna move as soon as I do that. It's gonna. It's the same. It's the same exact thing. Maybe you know what? Maybe what I could do is go downwards. But that's. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to fight no matter what, which is kind of bad. But I suppose we'll try it. Let's enter the shadow realm and see what happens. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought would... Oh! Ah! Okay, so that's how it works. Should you manage to get eaten by an herb? Yeah, so that that is how it works. So that's actually quite enlightening, and it's going to make things much, much easier going forward, because now we know exactly how the Shadow Realm mechanic works. Anyway, high on a misty mountaintop, you discover a vicious-looking plant. Well, it's a man-eating tree. Of course it's vicious. Ah, oh, well. Its gaping mouth looks more than capable of shredding you to pieces. But at its base, you notice some unusual fruit. If you throw something, you may be able to distract the savage mouth, thus allowing you to steal some fruit. Right. So, I actually don't have that much spare equipment any further. So, I'm actually... I mean, you can actually take a look here. I mean, I can't throw these things because they're all the default weapons that you can equip if you lose all of your other weapons. So I don't think I can throw those, and I don't think the plant would be too happy to look at them, even, because they are kind of rusty and everything. So 
That's obviously not going to be too good. Dark Thirst, I don't really want to give that away. So personally, I'm just going to say keep keep our equipment. You look for something suitable on the ground to throw, but quickly lose your way in the mist. That's absolutely fine. I don't mind. The blood moon draws close, but yet your companion hungers still. Yes, I, I understand that, dealer. I'm trying my best. I only have a certain amount of blood, thank you. A waxing moon lights the way as you continue through the pass. I still hunger, mortal. Do not forget our wager. The blood moon will soon be upon us. I dislike being disappointed. Well, don't we all? Okay, so it's it's a waxing moon now. Yeah, I think I might, I might not make it, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll get extremely lucky like we did in the previous one and get a huge amount of food or something like that. The Shadow Beast's eyes snap to the trees ahead. A shadow Night feud once again. And many stand yet in your path. You and your companion are surrounded by a group of cloaked Shadow Beasts. They say Lord Velez once again. Uh, okay. Mm, yes, okay. They are, they are being deceived, apparently. And uh, we are going to be attacking, so I could... Thieves evade heavy weapons more frequently. Uh, do I want to change weapons? Why not? We're fighting shadow enemies, and I did say that I was going to use this. So, uh, yeah, we can also damage the area as well with a powerful blast. So I think that's pretty good. And light weapons, obviously, well, this is technically not really a light weapon. It's more of a one-handed weapon, but... You know, it's not a dual-wielding weapon, that's what I mean. And uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to use against thieves, I suppose. Otherwise, I don't really have anything else to switch out, so I guess I'll just go for that. Uh, I'm not used to fighting with a one-handed. I haven't fought with a one-handed uh, for years, I think. I think I haven't actually used a one-handed in that long because I just so much prefer dual-wield or the two-handed. I think that's really good, but obviously bashing is going to be extremely useful here as well with our shield. Ah, well, we'll see. When he accused the mayor of being a shadow beast in disguise, they thought him mad. Alright, so let's see what we can do here. I'm going to tell Velez just to attack straight away. Try and get him to regenerate his ability faster than... Well, hopefully fast as possible. That's basically what we need. Okay, so that's a powerful blast. Doesn't do that much damage, unfortunately. Doesn't seem to do that much damage. There's a little bit of a block there. Okay, we have to... Nope, we have to prevent this guy from casting. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Velez, go and attack again, please. That would be very useful. Okay, I've finished off one of the shadows, at least. Ah, there's one casting. There is one casting. Let's go. Oh no. I think he casted it. Yes, he did. Okay, let's get let's get Velez up. That is not good. As you can see, he's gone into some kind of blood rage. It's making things very difficult for us indeed, but thankfully Velez has his ability back up and he can now do some attacking of his own. Okay, there we go. Nice, nice, nice block. That's what we need. Yes. All right. So there is one more remaining. He is in Blood Rage. Ah, it seems like Velez actually does attack even without his ability being used. So that's nice. I actually thought he might not do that, but he does. So that's cool. I think he attacks how many times? Three, four times? That's pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to bash this guy. Try and do some bonus damage against him. Because when you bash, you do get some bonus damage against that same target, which is actually really nice. I think that is actually part of the combat revamp that the developers did, and uh, it's made the game a lot better, because a lot of people did say that the combat was the weakest part of Hand of Fate 2, but I actually really like it. I, I like it before the uh, the, the uh, remaster of, of the combat system, and I like it now even more, so... That's pretty good. Anyway, the moon crept almost to completion, bathing the bodies of House Lashar in cold light, and we gained two fame. All right, so I must reach my uncle soon. Velez mutters to himself. All right, so yes, let's do it. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, where's this goblin going to go, actually? It's, he's coming right for us. And here is your reward, at least in potential. 
You trespass on gnomish ground, humans. Ah, okay, so yeah, obviously gnomish exchange once again. This is not great. I would have much preferred to get... Actually, what would I have preferred to get? Because there's not... I, I don't really have much for trade. I don't have any gold. I do have some food, obviously, but uh, I, I guess what I'd prefer is maybe some free food. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Anyway, gnomes, let's do this. Okay, let's kick them. Kick them while they're down. That's what we gotta go for. There we go. Uh, let's try and see if I can kick that one. There we go. The most efficient way to kick gnomes. The name of my autobiography, obviously. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Okay, so there we go. There we are. Very nice. All right. So that <laughs> oh, that animation at the end is very funny. All right, so that is done. Those gnomes are obviously going to be very, well, very regretful that they decided to attack us. Uh, I don't think I have anything for you. I, I could give them my helm. My helm is actually kind of nice because it does give me 10 defense, so I do get hit a lot less. And the adventurous garb is kind of basic it really doesn't do that much and I do have obviously a weapon but I don't think I really want to give them anything to be honest yeah uh, well here's the thing I do have an option I can technically if I want to give them the night sword and dark thirst both of these and then resort to using the villagers axe Weathered blades or the neglected sword. Bear in mind that the villager's axe is this. It is not even. It's not. It's not bad. You know, it's not bad. It's just very, very basic. And uh, yeah, it's kind of worse in every way from every other weapon that you're going to use. But we could gain a huge amount of gold in the process, and it might make sense for us to do that. So I'm actually thinking we might. I know it sounds crazy but it might be necessary for us to actually survive this entire adventure. So let's see what we can do. Let's uh, let's give them something. Okay, so I'm going to give them the Night Sword. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, they're happy with one? They're happy with one, one weapon? Okay, you're giving me... Okay, ten gold. Uh, I see now, if this was five gold then I might take the two food but I'm gonna take the ten gold here are you gonna give me something else for it yeah there we go more ten gold there, thank you there we go that's that's great oh oh okay I, I'm actually surprised now I'm actually surprised I thought to myself only one ten gold card no, I want more than that and uh, yeah then when they give me 30 that's, that's that's great very nice ah the toothless gnome looks perplexed a mighty war machine, to be sure, but however will we wield it? He turns to his brother, and together with the other gnomes, they heave the weapon into the bushes and out of sight. They are quite small, so I don't know how they're going to handle such a large sword, but maybe they can dual-wield it, if you know what I mean. They can have two gnomes handle it at once. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on. Okay, so that, that goblin is going to try and get us, but we can go this way. Vampire cannot cross running water. Oh These dear. Days you must deal with far more mundane opposition. Right. While crossing a stone bridge, you suddenly find yourself confronted by a villainous band. You could stand and fight the fiends or throw yourself to the mercy of the river below. Ah, considering I think that Velez is kind of vampiric, I don't really want to subject him to the water, so I'm going to stand and fight instead. I think we should be okay here. Ah, uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let me just change back to my dark thirst, because I actually thought that I would have to trade that, but no, no, I actually uh, get a little bit lucky there, I suppose. Alright, bit of a new map to fight on as well. Let's let Velez just attack straight away. Let's do a little bit of a bash here. There we go. And 
and the blight is obviously going to be kind of slow, so we don't really need to worry too much about it. Its attacks are unblockable, so it is going to be kind of difficult to deal with if we allow it to. There we go, there's a little bit of an invade there. There we go, not too bad. They look a little bit scarier than they actually are, but obviously it, uh, it really depends if you have some weapons that are not particularly good against corruption, because obviously I'm using, uh, I'm using this weapon and it has, uh, it has benefits against corruption, so that's good. Anyway, having spilled your enemy's blood, you search the bodies for anything useful. We also gain a little bit of fame as well. Ah, 10 max life. Okay, so we can either give... <laughs> yeah, I think 10 max life is maybe more useful than two food, but I'm saying that with trepidation because 10 max life? When am I ever going to be at max life? That's the thing. Ah, uh, hmm. I guess I'll do it, because I think we actually do gain a little bit. Yeah, you, you can see that we, we did get a little bit of HP back as well. We're now at 65 instead of, what was it, 58 or something like that? And 25 life, I'm going to take that because, obviously, as I've said before, 25 life is much more than to food. There we go. We're now at 90, and oh, we actually are able to reveal three encounters. But here's the thing. Do I want to do that? Because I could gain two food as a result, or I could... No, nah, you know what? I think revealing the three encounters is probably going to be more useful. Because I'm thinking to myself, if I'm able to know exactly where I'm going, or at, at least the cards that I don't want to step on, then that's going to give me a bit of an advantage. But obviously, if they reveal the cards furthest away from us, that's really not going to help. So I guess we'll just see how it goes. Ah, oh, that's very useful. Wow, that is fantastically useful. The Old Maiden is one of my favorite cards. She just gives you positive bonuses every single time. It's really, really good. Okay, so we're, we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, we're, we are now... Uh, the Goblin is going to move that way. That's not very nice of him, is it? Hmm. Okay, I guess we'll have to move into the Shadow Realm. Actually, you know what? Let's bargain with the Stranger first and let's indulge him. And I think we can finish talking. And let's go into the Shadow Realm once again. We're going to go upwards. I think. Hmm, I'm actually partially thinking maybe we should go to the left now. Because the Goblin that is in the top line is going to come pretty close to us, I think. But maybe we can go into the Shadow Realm again and, and just completely avoid him. Ah, a reward for a job well done. Ah, oh, very nice. A holy man approaches and greets you warmly. Greetings, friend. You are here just as the master said you would be. My talents lie at your disposal. Have you a need for any healing? Ah, uh, do I? Yes, very much. Thank you. Thirty-five life. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah. See now, it seems like uh, it seems like the game is giving us uh, a little bit of <laughs> joyous health. Okay, so, yeah, we're not going to discard that. There we go, we're back up at 125. Oh, now I feel bad for not allowing Velez to feast on us any further, because we would have gained huge amounts of HP now. Oh, well, you can't know that when, you, when you're going ahead, so I guess that's just how it is. I guess we'll just let him heal us to full HP, and now I'm, gonna, now I'm definitely going to discard this card, because we're at full HP, and we need food, so let's go for that. Oh, and again? How much life was he willing to give us? Oh, wow, that was crazy. Thank you very much, old man. Ah, I am glad to have fulfilled my master's wish to help you this day. The man bids you farewell. All right, so that's great. So now we can go into the Shadow Realm once again. We can completely avoid... Actually... Uh, mm, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that first. I should have spoken to the uh, to, to the companion first. I should have spoken to Velez. And uh, yeah, to those in the chat, I do have a YouTube channel. It's on the screen right now. You can take a look at it. It's down there uh, in the bottom right, kind of near there. 
And uh, yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's go by. I, I did make a bit of a mistake. Oh well, never mind. Because we would have been able to heal ourselves a little bit there, maybe. Maybe, maybe. You continue your escape through the brooding forest, and this is, of course, nothing, nothing happening. Nothing happening at all. Alright, so we are going to go into camp and bargain with the stranger. And we're going to indulge his appetite. Should I do it again? I think he's hungry, so why, why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Let's, let's live dangerously. That's, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to do that, but we're going to do it anyway. Who knows? Maybe we'll come across the old man again at some point. And I would like to go and you know speak to the maiden as well. Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty good. I think we can continue onward. What is that right next to us right now, by the way? What is that? Forage for food. Oh, that's actually great. Okay, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to try hunting wild animals this time. We've tried foraging for mushrooms. Didn't really go too well. Although I would actually like to see what the various colors of the mushrooms actually do. So should we just do that once more and see what the colors go for? Blue, red, yellow. It's going to be kind of fun to, to find out. Red. You harvest a crop of tasty red mushrooms for your travels. Ten. What? Ten food. Wow. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so this forest, once again, we don't need to worry about that too much. But that is that is pretty nice. And what else do we have here? I think this is probably going to be the end. A final chance to give your companion the succour he seeks. Do not press on unthinkingly. Exactly. Do not press on unthinkingly. Yes, the dealer is giving us a pretty big hint right there. Ah... Uh, yeah, feed your companion fully before the blood moon to win the gold token. Okay, so this is basically going on to the blood moon area. We're not going to do that just yet. I feel like we could probably find a lot more HP on the level. You can see the old maiden right there. So I think we're going to turn back and we're going to move once more and then we're going to go into the shadow realm to avoid this guy. At least I hope that's how it is. Yes. Okay, let's hope he doesn't turn around now. Okay, he's not turning around. That's fantastic. Oh, we're being followed, apparently. Okay, so the Temple of Divine Providence provides blessings in exchange for a simple gold donation. It's only six gold. Only six gold. I'm going to do that. Oh, wow. What, so we can actually select them at will? Really? I don't believe it. I'm skeptical. Very skeptical. Okay, so gambler's, a gambler's banquet. Receive two food after every dice gambit. Haven't gotten too many dice gambits, so I don't think that I don't think that's too worth it. Receive plus 15 life for every gold gain card you receive. Now that is crazy good. Maybe it would be an idea to do that. If your max life is less than 150, you may discard food gain or equipment gain cards to receive plus max life. Ah. Well, uh, hmm. That's not particularly good. Gain up to 20 gold at the beginning of a new map if you have less than 20 gold. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, Beggar's Charm and Gold Zealot together would be crazy, crazy nice. Uh, otherwise, adds plus one to each of your dice during the dice gambit. That is actually a really nice blessing if you're going to be doing a lot of dice stuff. But uh, we are going to go for Gold Zealot. I think that's probably the one that will give us the most benefit. Oh, there we go. We leave with our new blessing. Wow, that was actually just a completely positive card. That's fantastic. Very nice indeed. Okay, so a debt repaid. And I guess we'll go to the old maiden. Let's actually just take a look around here. Forest. There's a goblin there. I guess we'll just try and uncover these cards down here if I can avoid the goblins easily enough. And uh, we'll just try and get through the old maiden here because she's obviously going to give us a huge amount of good stuff and I think what I'm gonna do before we go any further we're gonna allow him to go nom on us once again and then we are going to not enter the shadow realm don't want to do that by mistake we're gonna go down here and I think we're just gonna ask her for food we could ask her for supplies or longer life now longer life would probably give us 
more health in many ways like max HP and probably instant heals as well so it might make sense for us to do that or we could just ask for gold and if she gives us two gold gain cards we'll gain health in the process thanks to our new blessing remember we just got that so I think this is gonna be better than asking for anything else so we're gonna ask for gold gain cards and we'll see what that does no amount of gold will satisfy a mortal, but if that is what you wish... An ancient voice falters on the words, as if long unused. Alright, so <laughs> she's obviously disapproving of that. Uh, well, 30 gold. Yes, I will very easily take that. And we gained 15 life as well. Oh, okay, so it was just one 30 gold gain card, but we now have 59 gold, which is pretty, pretty nice. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, so nothing there. We can just travel downwards. And we can now use the Shadow Realm to go over to the right, I think. That's probably what we're going to do. Mm, yeah, I think that's basically our only option. Yeah, Fallen Treasure once again. Okay, so this might be... Oh. Ah. Okay, this, I was going to say, this might be a, a time where I decline to go after some equipment, but Berserker's Creed is actually a very nice chess piece, so we might try to get it. Okay, I'm going to try and get it, and if we end up getting eaten by some troll cubs or whatever they are, then, uh, well, that's just how it is. Anyway, you can see here that this... <laughs> This is pretty fantastic. It gives you plus three gold whenever you draw a gold gain card. So we're basically getting a huge amount of synergy right now with all of our blessings and other other pieces of equipment as well. And uh, it also allows you to deal more damage the more life you lose in combat. So this is great for me because I get hit a lot. So <laughs> it's going to be good. Anyway, let's see if we're able to avoid them. Mm, uh, yeah, I, I could have pressed it there. Yeah. Can you tell I was trying to go for the left silver one? Yeah, I think I think so. You trip and fall. The claw troll cl uh, cl clubs. No, they are going to club me. They are going to club me to death. Yes, cubs swarm over you, and we're going to lose a little bit of life. Yeah, a little bit. That's not actually even too bad. Ah, dark alleys is over there. Okay. Right. So the forest is over there. We don't need to. We don't need to go there. So that's not necessary. Otherwise, there is a goblin that is going to go down to the left now, and I'd like to uncover those two other cards, if at all possible. But what we could do is go up and uncover the other cards along the left side there. Might make sense, or we might just want to leave, because we have 25 food. Maybe we'd be able to get a whole bunch of life on the next level before the final encounter, perhaps? Anyway. While roaming the dark alleyways of the capital, you see a suspicious group traveling in your direction. Oh, oh, it's a... okay, a trapper of frost. And a berserker of frost. Okay, well, they are definitely, uh... Definitely not, uh... Not, not from around here, that's for sure. Alright, so we see the traitor's urge. Oh, okay, so the traitor's urge is, is a throwable weapon. Basically an artifact that you can use in battle. I don't know what it does, though. I think the traitor's urge actually charms enemies for like 10 seconds or so, and uh, turns them to your side. Which is pretty good in the case of very powerful enemies. They can turn the tide of battle pretty easily. But, in this case, I'm actually going to go and try for the locked chest. And uh, we're going to see those frost enemies for the first time. You approach the men with the chest. They drop their cargo and draw their blades, saying, Slanish said no witnesses. Well, ah, uh, hello, I'm a witness. Please do not murder me. Uh, actually, they're, they're, tr they're trying to do that, aren't they? They are trying to do that. Let's, uh, let's try and avoid the inevitable. That's a lot of very muscular looking men. Okay, this is not going to go well. They have a lot of HP as well. Oh, thankfully they have a similar moveset to the other regular, you know, regular attackers from the Frost Clan. So that's pretty good. You can see that they attack three times in a row instead of twice. 
like the other guys. So that's pretty nice. Okay, let's let Velez do his thing. Oh, I got oh, I got I got a little bit stuck there. That's not particularly good. You can just mash Y over and over if you're playing with a controller. That is, I am actually playing on PC, obviously, but uh, I prefer using a controller for character action games like this. Especially considering it makes the combat, in my opinion, a lot more enjoyable. Let's just stun a whole bunch of them, try and eliminate them while they are under the influence of that. Let's try and avoid the bowlers, if at all possible. I am taking too much damage. Right, okay, I think that is it, but we took a lot of damage that I'm kind of... I'm kind of thinking to myself, why, why am I doing that? Why am I doing that? I don't know. Because life is basically the most important thing to us right now. If I could find the trading post or something along those lines where I could actually buy food for gold, I have 59 gold. That's a huge amount. I should be able to buy huge amounts of food for that. Oh, there we go. We're actually getting 15 gold here. I'm not going to discard this because of our blessing. Look at that, 15 gold, gain an extra 3 gold from that as well, and we have now noticed a secret compartment in the bottom of the chest. Oh no, dice gambits. Uh, uh, earlier on, this was not very good for me. I got 9 twice by rolling a 1. Uh, yes, that was, that was not very good. But this time, we actually did okay. And uh, we found some hidden equipment. Billy clubs. Oh, right. Okay, so these are dual wield weapons. They're very good against thieves, as you can see right there. And personally, I feel like these are pretty fun weapons to use, but I will not be using them right now because we're not really fighting thieves that much. If we do come across them, I will use it probably. And there's my helm activating once again, giving us a little bit of insight. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we have 25 food. I am going to indulge his appetite once again. Going to try not to kill myself by mistake. And then we're going to just cook a little bit of food here. There we go. That should be good enough, I hope. Uh, maybe it will be, maybe it won't. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Shadow Realm abilities to go through over here and through there like that and this guy's gonna move hopefully so yeah there we go so that we're not actually going to be affected by him unfortunately this is now putting me in a pretty bad position but I guess what I can do is just use the shadow realm again and we can avoid the patrol coming there and we can hopefully avoid that one Actually, that's not going to avoid us, is it? No, that's not going to avoid us. Oh dear. Captured once more, and everything is fading to black. We have 51 HP, so I should be okay against whoever we're fighting. Yeah, this is going to be pretty easy, in my opinion. I think... Can I change my weapons right now? Nope, can't change my weapons. Oh well, never mind. We'll just have to do with the uh, Dark Thirst. I was hoping that I might be able to change to the Billy Clubs, amusingly enough, because I thought they might be better against these riflemen. But, uh, well, we'll just have to... Ah! Really? <laughs> oh, that was not very good. Okay, well, at least we were able to eliminate that pretty easily. I'm just going to try and eliminate the riflemen first. And also bear in mind, we do not have Velez either, so he is going to take a bit of a break. I'm sure he's pleased. And I'm sure he's even more pleased that we're getting our heart pumping, because that is going to generate more blood for him, obviously. But anyway, yes, hopefully we'll survive this. There we go. Alright, so we did actually get hit once, but that was only about 7 damage, so it shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be causing a game over, at least not for the moment. It might be bad soon, but hopefully not too soon. Anyway, sacrifice your blood once again. 
Yeah. Right. Yes. I, I. Well, I was attempting to avoid. Thank you very much. I was attempting it, but failing. Anyway, I don't know whether we really should go any further. I think actually we might be able to. Let's let's actually just move back and forth here a little bit. I need to definitely cook some food. Thirty-nine. Is that enough? I guess. I guess that's enough in case we manage to fail in some in some respect. Anyway, I'm gonna go down here, get whatever this is. Bounty, uh, bounty hunters. That is not very good. Okay. Well, let's see if we can ambush them. We're gonna just consume an additional little point of food there, and the ambush is gonna make all the difference. Hopefully, I, I really do not want to fight the anarchist because he throws molotovs, and that's gonna be kind of harsh. So, if at all possible, I would like to... Yes, finally. Okay. Phew. Okay, so as you can see, you and Velez leap upon your enemies like demons, slaughtering several before the others react. And your companion gained 10 life from that. I wish I gained 10 life from that, but no. The mercenaries watch in horror as Velez slakes his thirst upon their companions. And now we only have to fight one enemy. So, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier, where... We tried this particular encounter, and it didn't go too well. So, thankfully it did this time. Alright, so we only have to deal with these guys. It should be easy enough, but these fellows are going to be kind of difficult in comparison to regular thieves, because they are, well, more, more like assassins, really. I just wish I had my billy clubs right now. I could have actually switched, couldn't I? I probably could have switched, and that question cost me 7 HP. Great. Hmm, yes, there we go. Okay, so we gain another 4 fame. Oh, 25! You know what? I really do need to find some kind of merchant. Really do. Okay, so I'm gonna just continue here. The ring of food is not really paying off as much as it really could be at the moment, because obviously we do have that blessing that is giving us a huge amount. Oh, okay, so Bounty Hunters is the last card on the left there. So thanks to our helm for that reveal. That's very, very useful. Let's try and move here. Ah... Uh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I moved the wrong way. I should have moved to the Shadow Realm, and we should have gone the other way like this and like this there we go here in the light you are once more at risk oh it's just forest really it's just forest okay that's absolutely pitiful really bad okay so i guess we'll just have to move on i am gonna have to leave whichever card that is at the bottom untouched i guess uh, I, i'm kind of just thinking if it is a merchant it could be extremely useful to us. So I'm actually going to go down there with the use of our Shadow Realm abilities. And hopefully it's going to be something worthwhile. Because if it's not, then well, that's just how it has to be, I suppose. It's just forest. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, well, I, I guess it doesn't really matter because we can just use Shadow Realm all the time now to get back. And then we can just make a quick run for the finish, and it is going to take us to the next level, so I, I think it is going to take us to the next level. Hopefully he's not just going to kill us outright. Let's go to the next level. Ah, okay, so yeah, the Blood Moon unfortunately did rise, and you can see here, I was, actually, I was at 265 life. I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to get to 500, but I think mainly... The thing you've got to think about is that the AI automatically built our deck. So I didn't choose the cards that we were encountering here, but uh, we actually got pretty lucky most of the time. Anyway, a brilliant crimson moon hangs high overhead as you journey through the pass. The blood moon is at its zenith, and I am left wanting. And we did not, we did not sate our companion's hunger, unfortunately. Unfortunately. 
You were chosen for your strength, for your cunning, but you demonstrate neither. Well, unfortunately, uh, that's not done. But uh, it seems like the objective is still active. So, I mean, not obviously the Blood Moon, but the life bargain, as you can see up in the top there, is still active. So maybe we can still complete that. Uh, there's another shadow feud. Oh, no. You now. Too slowly. Too slowly. Right, so we have some shadows here and some steel. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch to the billy clubs here. It will give me an opportunity to actually show you the dual wield weapons as well. Because we haven't actually used any of those just yet. But it might make sense. Alright, let's go for it. So once again, oh, there's the Blood Moon. Okay, so we might actually have some problems here because obviously they are going to be pretty strong now, maybe. They might have gained some additional power thanks to the Blood Moon being active. I do have to be very careful of their incantations as well. I don't know whether these guys actually use the incantations. Maybe they don't need the incantations anymore? No, it seems like they do. Okay. Seems like they are still casting those things, so that's pretty fine with me. That guy's going to cast. Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. Taking an absolute beating, aren't they? They seem to have a lot of HP. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm using the Billy Clubs. I mean, they do 18 damage every time you hit with them, so it's not actually that bad. You know, it says 9 damage, but they hit twice, so... I would say it's pretty good. And especially considering their critical hit attack is actually very nice as well, because it seems to immobilize most enemies very easily, and it does do a little slight bit of extra damage. Alright, so yeah, we're still obviously going to try and reach his uncle. The goblin patrols are still causing problems, as is the case, but I have 105 gold, so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to come across a merchant of some kind. Ah, here is the merchant. Unfortunately, it is a trader rather than an actual merchant where I can spend gold, so I suppose the only thing that I can do right here is trade my equipment. But what do I want to trade? I don't really have too much, do I? I mean, I can trade equipment for food. Two food gain cards, two pieces of equipment. I guess what I could do is my ring of food, because that's the thing, I kind of need food. I know that I said the ring of food is not exactly useful nowadays, but if you think about the fact that I'm going to run out of food soon if I'm unable to find a merchant, then being able to convert gold gain cards and various other cards that I wouldn't otherwise need because I'm rolling in money right now. I mean, you can see that 105 gold that's pretty good. I mean, it's OK, you know, and uh, uh, it might make sense for us to do that. Otherwise, the only other thing that I can think of is just get rid of Dark Thirst. I know, I know we've, we've really enjoyed using that weapon so far, but yeah, it might make sense to get mm, to, to just get a, a food gain card while we still can because I think this is probably the last level that we're gonna have so let's trade equipment for food and let's trade one and we'll just trade dark thirst I know this is kind of painful because it's such a such a fun weapon to use but I'm I'm pretty happy using the dual wield weapons now there's 10 food okay that's that's pretty fantastic I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to enter the Shadow Realm and avoid this goblin patrol right here. There we go, and we can probably even turn back. Oh, forage for food. Oh, that's pretty good. We can also turn back 
and step on the card that we've just stepped on to unlock that as well and that's going to be pretty good okay i'm actually going to go fishing once again because the wheel gambit in my opinion is basically guaranteed food if you are a little bit decent at tracking i guess it's not exactly supersonic fast so uh yeah it's pretty easy to get at least and there's an extra five food which is always nice and thanks to our helm oh deep water once again okay well we know to avoid that area then i guess i mean even though it's not that area is not exactly difficult i suppose anyway let's continue let's have a look and see what this card is oh this is forest oh okay well i guess it was good that i avoided it then initially Pickpockets. Oh, oh no. I'd hoped for better. You meet Merrick at the square as he instructed. He gestures to a carpet seller at the bazaar. The Reeve, he explains. Watch and listen. If the Lord got wind you were short on your taxes, there would be trouble, says the Reeve. Mind you, I do like this rug. Better you hand that over than all your stock. What do you say? I've not, and that's a... A rare masterpiece from the Eastern Belt, says the flustered rug merchant. As the altercation continues, you notice the Reeves' pouch hanging open. So you see it then, Merrick says with a grin. You know it's only really stealing if you get caught. Right, so this is an encounter card that I unlocked previously in my playing of Hand of Fate 2. And this is the sort of link to that. So we're actually going to steal because that's exactly what Merrick wants us to do. That's the spirit, he says. Now remember, the trick is to know when to stop, but if you're any good, you won't need to. You move behind the reeve while pretending to admire the carpets on display. As he continues to haggle, you slide your hand into his pouch. Alright, so we can gain a little bit of food here. Actually, food, no. We can gain some health and some gold. Ten gold, the maximum. Very nice. You draw an item from the reeve's pouch. We can steal more if we want. Shall we steal some more? Let's steal some more. Why not? Uh, okay, I think I... Yeah, I know where the pain card is. So I guess I'm just going to take one of the gold cards. And I think we're going to... Pocket our spoils now and leave. Is that it? Merrick says. Well, I guess you're not as good as I thought. You pocket your spoils as he disappears into the crowd. Ah, so we did not sate his need for... Excitement, I guess you could say. Anyway, we are going to discard this card, because I don't need the 10 gold. And we're also going to discard this one as well, because 3 gold does not get you 2 food. So, that's pretty good in my opinion. And let's see... Ah, payment due. Okay, let's... Uh, maybe we want to try and avoid that. I'm not entirely sure about it. I think it might be a bad card, or maybe not. We'll see. Okay, oh, man-eating tree once again. Okay, I'm not going to be doing this. We're just going to keep our equipment. I think it's probably best that we, we try not to mess with it too much. And uh, I'm actually going to try and see whether we can still bargain with him. It seems like we still can, so this seems to be our main objective for the most part. But maybe it's not going to make any difference anymore, but, well, we'll see. Alright, I might have overdone it a little bit on the uh, feasting, but, uh, well, we'll see. Right, so there's going to be another goblin stepping there. Uh, I think I can actually use Shadow Realm for this. That is definitely going to help me avoid the incoming patrol. Because he's going to hop the off. There we go. Fade, watch closely. You are being followed. Right, so here we go. This is the kind of thing that I want to see right here. This is fantastic because this guy is going to sell us some extremely nice food cards. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so, oh, look at this. Passes you a bag of what appears to be pebbles. He insists that they are fruits from the desert lands, encouraging you to bite into one. Inside is a soft, spongy flesh that tastes of blackberries. Okay, so that is a lot of food right there. Let's see. Okay. I have no idea. I'm sorry. I have no idea. I guess, there we go. Okay, we, we did it. Amazing. 
So that's 10 gold. Literally just 10 gold for this amount of food. We are going to be rolling in food right now. That is really, really nice. I could buy some more exotic fruits, but I think we're going to buy some pies. That is 17 food right there. Uh, okay. Well, we might have bad luck this time. Or maybe not. Apparently, I'm actually kind of good at this particular encounter for some reason. It is just pure luck in, on, on my part, at least. There we go. 48. 48 food. Very nice. Let's buy some tarts to finish it off. 8. 8 food for this. Okay, this is going to be harsh. Yep. Should have just gone for the left one. Oh, well, never mind. I can decline the purchase. But I have 91 gold. I think I'm just going to pay him. Just going to pay him. Why not? I mean, that's three food and five food. That's eight food. That's crazy. That's really nice. So I think, actually, let's do it once more. And we are... Oh, we're back to this. Oh, that's actually very nice. Wow. Okay, so how much food can I literally get from this guy? Can I get unlimited food from this guy or something? As long as I've got the money... I guess uh, it, it seems that way. Let's buy another pie then. 17. Yeah, this is a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I, I don't even really mind. I, I really don't even really mind. 30 gold is perfectly fine with me. We have a, a, enough, really. But maybe, maybe we don't, you know? Maybe we just need as much food and as much health as we can get our hands on. But I think that's fine for now. Let's see what else is being uncovered. Forage for food. Alright. Well, that's okay, I suppose. Let's see what else we can do here, then. I'm gonna bargain with him, and we're going to indulge his appetite twice, I think. And then we're also gonna cook some food for us. Huge amount. Really. That's crazy. And we're just gonna do that again, actually. Let's try and see how much food we can actually... Well... How much how much health we can actually give him, because technically we are food to him, so I, I guess that's the case. Anyway, let's uh, cook some more food. Okay, we're up to 440 now. I think we can actually make it. 64 food is easily enough, I think. It's weird how I always stop on, on 77. I don't know why. Oh well, there we go. I think that is going to be it. Yep, I just need to do one more, and then that's done. This is your last chance to heal before the fin- Oh, before the finale? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Are you ready to face what my uncle will have waiting? Not yet. Not yet, actually. Ah, uh, I would like to heal a little bit more, please. Okay, there we go. And another one. There we are. Alright, so shall we move on one more little little card and then we'll finish up with the last little bit of health. Just in case there's something amazing here and then it's going to give me mercenaries. No, it just gives me forest. Oh, okay. Well, that's not actually too bad. Let's just go once more and see if there are anything, if there's anything else. Oh, a blood moon rises. Oh, okay. So this is actually this is actually it, but uh, mm, yeah, this is your last chance to heal before the finale. Well, I'm gonna have to turn back here because I do need to heal him once again. Let's do it. Now the beast is truly unleashed. Can you withstand him? Use him. Oh wow. Okay, he's gone he's gone absolute beast mode right there. The beast's pupils contract and then brighten to searing red. His yellowed fangs grow as his as his horns curl. Uh, yes. Okay, so everything's going to happen now. Once again you feel the strange rush of darkness. And so things press on. Uneasy and ever poised on the edge of conflict, like the empire itself. As your vision returns, you find yourself in a peculiar circular room, cold and dimly lit. A great shadow beast, his grand robes gleaming with enchantment, waits alone. 
The figure bows deeply, then raises his hand with a sly grin. Velez, what brings you here? Are you not supposed to be rotting in the goblin pits for another lifetime? Velez frowns. And so things press on, uneasy and ever poised on the edge of conflict, like the Empire itself. His uncle approaches, eyes like embers growing in size in preparation for conflict. Come now, you must understand I sent the house after you because I have been tasked with keeping you in the pits. Velez interjects. Perun has broken his oath. Rusalka is dead. His uncle chuckles. I saw her but three days ago. What proof have you to back up such a claim? Robin has been to her shrine. He has seen her skull drenched in her blood. That's actually, uh, that's actually Velez talking. My bad. Grobben, you are so quick to trust these goblin creatures, and you took this human through the lease? Velez, the pits have truly sent you mad. The monstrous creature clicks his fingers, signaling yet more shadow beasts to file into the chamber. Oh no, I really wish I had those sacrificial blades now, or, or something that does additional shadow damage. Oh well. You watch transfixed as your companion's body stretches and elongates, muscles bulging, the power of your blood burning through his veins. Ah, uh, yes. Do not speak of Grobben, and this thin Grobben in such a way, Velez growls. Perun has poisoned your mind. His uncle grins as they leap upon each other. Alright, let's do this. This is the final boss battle of the adventure. Let's see if we're able to pull it off. I'm actually kind of confident because of the way Velez looks on that card. <laughs> he looks kind of beastly, so I'm hoping that he's going to do all the work. Ah, Baron Kresnik, one of the last remaining family members of House Lashar. Elders can summon shadows before entering blood madness. Use evade to avoid their attacks. Alright, I will try my best. Oh, okay. Oh, I evaded into it. I'm very good at this. Can you tell? Yes. Alright, so let me see. Maybe I... Do I actually want to even focus on these guys? Do I want to focus on these or do I want to... Oh, I should probably go and heal Velez, actually. He seems to have lost against his against his uncle. seems to be it. That seems to be the end of the Baron, but I don't know whether he's going to come back. Does he respawn in some way? Maybe he uh, maybe he has some kind of regeneration. No, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like we got him. Very nice indeed, Velez. Yes. Seems like we have avenged him and uh, helped him on his way to redemption as well. It is no longer safe here, your companion mutters, his tattered rags drenched in the blood of his house. He grips your shoulder and you slip back through the darkness. You return to the glow of a campfire. Velez awaits, glaring into the flame. Perun will pay for this, so few of us remain, and still he would poison the house against me. Your allies make strange company at the best of times, yet... Will they accept this one? One so strange, so bloodthirsty. Stay here, servant. I will return for you in three or seven days. He stands confidently and melts into the gloom of night. And we have bef bef befriended? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, if I could say that. Velez the Shadow. Very nice. 
You take a seat by the fire, weary from your ordeals, as you prod investigatively at the coals. Conflicting thoughts of your bloodthirsty new ally keep you from truly enjoying your reclaimed freedom. Alright, so we do get a little bit, little token here that we'll unlock additional cards. For befriending the stranger, we have a Shadow Beast's Grave and the Stranger card itself. For escaping your captors, we... Oh, Witching Blades, that sounds fun. As well as a Shrapnel Bomb. We, we also get the Pit and Courier. More encounter cards. For giving your life to save an injured thrall, we get the Knight Sword. Alright, that's actually pretty nice. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the uh, that's the new DLC for Hand of Fate 2, the Servant. We've unlocked some additional cards. So what I'd say is, uh, in the next stream, which is going to happen tomorrow, we're going to try and encounter some of those. And I might actually customize my deck next time as well to maybe help us out a little bit. But I think we did okay. If you'd like to check out Hand of Fate 2, you can do that through its store page, and the new DLC is available as well. Anyway. Thank you for watching, everyone, and uh, hopefully see you next time.